so we have did in the previous lecture function what we have defined is that exists a function e which is unique also which satisfy the two condition that e dash of x the derivative of the function is itself and the second condition is e of 0 is 1 since there is existence is there and it is uniqueness we can define this function as exponential function and we have discussed certain properties of this exponential function into the previous lecture the objective of this lecture is to defining the logarithm function and the power function so from anybody from you in able to define what do you mean by logarithm function using the exponential function So the simple definition is you can give since this function is strictly increasing e, and as per the graph we know the graph of the exponential function is this this is 0 1 point from the graph as well as it is a strictly increasing function we can say that the exponential functions is 1 1 as well as it is on 2 and therefore the inverse of this function is exist and if you can see the inverse of the function if the graph is this the graph of the function is this then the inverse of this function can be drawn in this map and this is the point 1 0 and that is called a logarithm function the inverse of exponential function is known as a logarithm function the definition the function inverse E, which is R to R, it's called a logarithm function, or it's called the natural logarithm. So this is the definition of the natural logarithm function, and it is denoted by. L or in general you are denoting as Ln. Okay. And the E and L both of them are inverse of each other. So that's why the a composition of this two at any point will give the itself. This is true for every x is in R and e composed with l at point y is y for every y in r but y here it has to be positive because the domain you can see in the graph of the function is a positive for the logarithm function and as the formula and this formulas these two things can be rewritten as ln of e power x will be x that is the thing same thing is written here and e power ln of y will be y which is exactly the same thing which we have here 
so using these two formulas and the definition of logarithm and exponential function will derive certain results for certain properties of a logarithm function the first one should note that this logarithm is also an increasing function in its domain if x is positive if the x is positive then uh, a function is increasing the derivative of log x is what that all the things we can come or we study in the, the properties of logarithm function so the logarithm is a strictly increasing function l with the domain all x is in r such that x is greater than 0 the derivative of l is given by l dash of x is 1 upon x for all x which are positive So this is the first one the second one is a like exponential function l of x plus so x into y is l of x plus l of y for every x and y is greater than zero the next property that is l of 1 is 0 and l of e which is the Euler number is 1. The fourth property is l of x power r is r l of x for all x greater than 0 and r is belongs to q. A fifth property, a limit of L of x is in minus infinity if x approaches to 0 plus and limit of L of x is infinity if x approaches to infinity. So these are the properties that we have to discuss for the logarithm function. L is a strictly increasing function. It is actually follows from E is a strictly increasing with the domain R and its range is all positive numbers like this. X belongs to R. So we should write the fact that the L is strictly increasing with the domain all x is belongs to r such that x is greater than 0 and the range r follows from the fact that E because L and E both of them are inverse of each other. So whatever the domain of E will be a range of L and whatever the range of E will be a domain of L. So that follows from that and it is E is strictly increasing. So the L is also strictly increasing. It follows that the fact that E and E is strictly increasing and having the this domain and range which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. Okay. So 
that is follows from this now the first thing that is a derivative of l is 1 by x so we know that for the exponential function e dash of x is itself and this is positive and it follows that l is also differentiable from this over what are the domain is there and what is the chain rule if we apply here so this will be the 1 upon e dash of l of x which will gives you 1 upon e composed with l x which will gives you 1 upon x for all x is belongs to zero to infinity the second property in that you have to prove that l of x into y is this l of x plus y so for any x greater than 0 and y greater than 0 if you have u which is l of x and v will be l of y then what we have x is l of u and y will be l of sorry e of u and this is e of v now as per this it is x into y it is e of u into e of v but the property of the exponential function which says that e of x plus y will be of e of x into e of y that is e power x plus y is equal to e raised to x into e power y as per this this is e of u plus v so now l of x into y will be x into y is this e of x plus y so i can write down e of u plus v so that is l o e u plus v but l o e will gives you u plus v but u the value of u is l of y so l of x and v will gives you l of v so that's prove that l of x into y is equal to l of x plus l of y the third property can be done from this l of 1 is 0 and l of e is 1 which actually follows from this property so i want to prove that l of 0 is 1 can somebody this is our objective can somebody tell me what to do i have this relation l of x into y is equal to l of x plus l of y now can somebody tell me what to do or you can have this e of 0 is 1 which we have for exponential function and how to prove that l of 0 is how to prove that l of 1 is 0 sorry how to prove that l of 1 is 0 and i have this
L of 0 is 1. Use the same technique which we have used here. Apply L both side. So why you are L O E at zero is equal to L of one, which implies that L O E will give you the same point. And on this side we have this. The second quantity you have to prove that L of E is one. So secondly, you have to prove that L of E is 1, but that also can be easily seen by E of 1 is E. You apply L both sides. That is L of E, but L O E of 1 will give me 1. So this completes the proof of second. Now for the third one, you have to prove that L of x power r is r into L of x for every rational number q, which can be easily seen from this for the natural number. First you have to prove the result is true for natural number and then we have to extend that result for rational number. So the, for the third one, first we shall show that L of n into x is equal to L of x power n. That was very simple. Sorry. What happens? It is x power n is n into x, Lx. So it is L x power n equal to n L of x for every n in n. First we will show this. And that can be easily seen from this result which we have obtained. That is L of x equal to L of x into y is equal to L of x into L of y. So we know that or we shall use, we shall prove this result using mathematical induction. We know that L of x square can be written as L of x into L of x, but that can be written as L of x plus L of x, which can be written as 2 times L of x. Therefore, the result is true for n equal to 2. Obviously for 1 it is true. We shall assume that the result is true for n equal to k. That means L of x power k will be k times L of x for every n in so every k is in n which is less than n and for every x is in greater than 0. Every x greater than 0. So now we will start with L of x plus x power k into x, that I can return as L of x power k into x. Both of them are positive, so that's why I can write down this is L of x power k plus L of x. But the result is true for k, so it is k times L of x plus 
L of X. So that combinedly we can write K plus 1 times L of X. So hence the result is 2 for K plus 1. N equal to K plus 2. Therefore, we have X power, L of X power N is N times L of X for every x it is in 0 and for every n it is in n now positive rational numbers we have to do this 1 upon x which is l of x plus l of 1 upon x since on this side is 0 we can subtract l of x from both side so l of 1 by x we have minus l of x so l of x power minus 1 will be minus L of X. So for minus 1, the result is now if I have M which is in Z and N which is in N, I start with L of X power M by N. So as per this quantity we can write down this is for due to this one and this one we the result is 2 for x power 1 upon n raised m into one of L of one upon N for M is integer because for natural number this is true for minus one is also true so for any integer Z if I have the result is true. now the question is how we can take this one by N on the other side so for that we can work with the other quantity that is L of 1 is E but not L of 1 is e, but L of E is 1 this one upon n so l of e one and so this will not be used but is this x power 1 upon n is 1 upon n l of x this is our objective so that of x power n upon n will be equal to l of x which is already there yeah so we can do this way to prove the next thing we have l of x which i can write down l of x power n by n since the result is true for any natural number we can write down this is n into l of 1 upon l of x power 1 upon n and hence this 1 upon I divide 1 upon n both side or multiply 1 upon n both side we will have 1 upon n l of x power 1 upon n. so due to this now we can write down this is m by n l of x so we have the result which I can say now is l of x power r is r into l of x 
for every r is in q and for every x greater than 0 so we understood what i have did so first let it, let me recall what i have did in this because it's too much complicated it's not complicated but i have to con the longly first we have used a mathematical induction to prove this statement and that is easy and we can follow that quantity so secondly i have to prove the result is true for of the form integer so to prove the result is integer we'll use the concept that or the identity that l of 1 is 0 since l of 1 is 0 1 i can write down as x into 1 upon x so this as per the property of logarithm function we can write down l of x plus l of 1 upon x so this will imply that l of x or minus x will be l of 1 upon x this will imply that l of 1 upon x is this will imply that l of x power minus 1 will be minus of l of x so hence what we can say is l of x power m and if any m which is an integer if it is negative integer then we can write down this is l of x power minus n minus n for m equal to minus n for some n in n if it is negative if it is positive integer no problem if it is zero it is follow so this is there and due to this we can write down this is minus l of x power m n and for n we already have the result so this is m into l of x so hence what we can say is l of x power m is m into l of x for every x sorry every m it is an integer and x is greater than 0 next is to prove the result is from 1 upon so for that what we have did is this concept that is i'll start with l of x so l of x i can write down is x power 1 so instead of 1 we can write down x power n by n is a positive number integer so that i can write down as l of x power 1 upon n so this will imply that 1 upon n into l of x is equal to l of 1 x power 1 upon n and hence this will leads to x raised to l of x raised to 1 upon n is 1 by n l of x so that means if it is of the form 1 by n type then you can take it here so now if you have m which is an integer and n which is a natural number then l of x power m by n for integer we already did that this is m into x power 1 upon n and for 1 upon n type number we already have this so it is m by n l of x so hence from this what we can say is l of x power r is l of r into l of x for every x greater than 0 and for every r which is in this result is also can be extended for the real number but for that you have to construct a sequence of rational numbers which converts to a real number and since the you have to discuss the continuity of the logarithm function the leads to that result is true for any real number r now the next property that is the fifth one is to prove that limit of l of x is minus infinity as your x is approaches to zero which will leads to or which will can prove using the 
a limit of e power n is infinity as n tends to infinity and the other quantity which we have to prove is limit of or we have we know that limit of minus n as n tends to infinity is zero and since the l of e power n you have m and l of e power minus n why because of this property l of x power n x is e here so it is n into l of e l of e is 1 so that's why l of e power n is n and l of e power minus n is minus n. if you apply the limit here both side then this will leads to due to the increasing nature of the function l at l of x limit of l of x as x tends to infinity i can replace this x as because x is going to infinity so instead of that x i may replace by e power x so limit l of e power n as n tends to infinity will be infinity because it is n and n goes to infinity and uh, a limit of x tends to 0 plus l of x x tends to 0 plus that means i need to have a uh, some sequence which is goes to my 0 that is e power minus n it goes to 0 as n tends to infinity and due to this it will tends to minus infinity so this is this was the results to prove okay a next function is the power function what does it mean of a power function is a function of the type x power alpha this is known as a power function can somebody define what is x how to define x power alpha how to define what is the definition of x power alpha don't say it is x into x into x alpha times because alpha is any number any real number anybody from you can define x power alpha yes you can define using logarithm function as well as exponential function so as per the definition this is e of alpha of l of x or i can say this is exactly e power alpha ln x because as per this this is e power ln of x power alpha and x power of ln and e is the inverse of each other so that's why it is x power alpha. so this x is a function so x power alpha is a function where x is positive number due to this l of x is there and alpha is any real number that you can consider so this is the definition of x power alpha okay now there are certain properties of this power function that i am leaving you to prove it yourself the first one is 1 raised to alpha is 1 the second one is x raised to alpha is positive the third one is 
x into y raised to alpha is x raised to alpha y raised to alpha. The fourth one is x by y raised to alpha is x power alpha upon y raised to alpha. The fifth one is x power alpha plus beta is x power alpha into x power beta. Sixth property is x raised to alpha power beta. x raised to alpha beta is same as x power beta power alpha. Seven, x raised to minus alpha will give me one upon x raised to alpha. Eight, if alpha is less than beta, then x power alpha is less than x power beta for every x greater than one. So these are the some results, or I can say a property of exponential function. What is it with the derivative? That also you can do. You know that the derivative of x power alpha is alpha into x power alpha minus one for every x positive greater than zero. We can have this. So can you do it? This properties of a power function using this exponential function and the logarithmic function. Try to prove properties of this. Now, and I want the answer from you guys. How to prove that one power alpha is one? E raised to l n one. Ln one is zero, and e raised to zero is one. So, as per the definition, one raised to alpha is e power alpha ln one. Whatever. Ln one is zero, so this is e power alpha into zero. E power, this will give you e power zero, and e power zero is one. So e one raised to alpha is one. Same way, prove that x power alpha is greater than zero. X into y raised to alpha is this. All property you have to prove yourself. Will you able to do it? Yes, sir. It's easy. Okay. So now in the next lecture, we are going to discuss regarding the existence of trigonometric functions. And probably that one is my last lecture. And the rest of the things I am giving you is a homework to do it. There are certain trigonometric properties are there. Okay, trigonometric properties are there, and all sort of things is there. Likewise, the same kind of thing. So that's it for this video or the lecture. If you have any doubt, you can ask.